One of my favorite concepts in literature, and the world in general, is the idea of balance. The idea that while some things may be good alone, most, if not all things, find greater meaning and purpose when paired with and compared to their equal and opposite counterparts. Essentially, the idea of yin and yang. Two equal but opposite sides balancing each other to find peace. This concept has always set well with me and it's really no surprise as it's something that's always been shown to my age group the entire time we've been consuming media. Aang, any shonen protag slash deuteragonist combo, Yugi, Omi, many, many, many martial arts movies center around balance, you get the idea. And just like all of these franchises, Pokemon has also fallen into a bit of a habit when making their cover Pokemon for their new games Yin Yang coded. I mean, if we just take a look at Generation 5, the legendary Pokemon for this game are the concepts of Yin and Yang itself, so I feel pretty confident in saying that Nintendo has created a bit of a pattern. From Yin Yang Dragons, to dogs with weaponry, and even concepts of space and time, this is a format that not only works, but works well. And I don't think that'll change anytime soon to be honest, but out of all these combinations of mythical creatures that rival slash compete with each other, there's always been one pair that has shined the brightest to me. And don't get me wrong, I do have a lot of personal history with one of these Pokemon, but I can confidently say that what I'm feeling is definitely not just nostalgia. Rather, it has been a deep thought on which pair I genuinely think is the best overall, and the decision I've obviously come to since you can see the thumbnail is Groudon and Kyogre. And if you like videos like this and you want to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for me. Trying to hit 500 subscribers, we're almost there, we just broke 400. Trying to hit 5 before the end of the year, so let's do it. Now, why would I choose these two in particular over any other pair of legendaries that represent opposite sides? Well, simply put, I think that they have had the best narrative showing overall, and I think that Game Freak may have given these two a little extra love in comparison to some of the other legendaries. Let's take a look at the games for a moment and compare the narrative weight that some of these legendary duos hold. Taking a look at Generation 4 and its remakes, our story is to stop an evil organization from controlling either the powers of time or space as they plan to remake the world entirely. Narratively heavy, and the moment everything happens is decently cinematic, but unless you're playing Platinum, everything wraps up a little too quickly in my opinion. How about Generation 7? We as the players ride on the back of essentially either a sun or moon deity, and fly through space into wormholes to find alien-like creatures that have been messing with our dimension, and to stop a being from eating all the light in the world. Overall, it's one of the best stories and duos, but the pacing in my opinion is once again kinda iffy, as many of the Pokemon games are. Generation 8 has us teaming up with our best friend and the legendary Pokemon of the region to fight Master Hand, and this moment was also cool because it tied in the gimmick of that generation very well in my opinion. But one thing that has always set the struggle of Groudon and Kyogre on a higher pedestal for me personally was watching the two of them actually interact. We're told that Zekrom and Reshiram are ideologically different and therefore split from Kyurem, so show us these two Pokemon struggling against each other. Make it epic! Too often are we shown only one side of Legendary Coin each time we play Pokemon because oftentimes the other Legendary is locked behind a version exclusive. But when it came to Generation 3, you actually got to see a struggle between these two Pokemon and the conclusion of the fight, and even if you went with one of the base games, the presence of these Pokemon were still felt. Another point in favor of these two is the fact that their presence alone changed the entire feeling of the game. Going back to the example of Generation 4, we as players don't really start to take notice until explosions start going off all around the region due to Team Plasma schemes. But that's just it, it's Team Plasma causing the destruction, not the Pokemon itself. Sure, we see that once the Pokemon is summoned, the sky does in fact change, but it doesn't feel as apocalyptic as Generation 3. In Generation 8, Eternatus is the one causing issues at the end of the game, but it feels more like a final boss than a natural disaster or anything of that sort. 
but when Groudon and Kyogre finally make their debut, the entire weather of the Hoenn region changes, either becoming harsh sunlight that is too strong for most people to handle, or torrential downpours that just destroy everything in their wake. Causing drastic changes just upon the Pokemon appearing definitely made the atmosphere feel different than any Pokemon game that came before it, and it left a huge impression on what a legendary Pokemon should be. Well, to me at least. Another little side note, people of the region actually start to remark on the changed weather, making the game actually feel alive. In Generation 4, most NPCs aren't making any note of the explosions that are happening, and in Generation 8, none of the NPCs, to my knowledge, aside from like the main ones, are talking about the giant, obvious wormholes in the sky. The point I'm making here is when Groudon and Kyogre make their appearance, the game makes sure to highlight that and showcase that these two are actual threats to humanity. The last point I'd like to talk about is just design in general. Oftentimes when Game Freak creates box art legendaries, they tend to either make the Pokemon unable to do super effective damage against each other, like Lugia and Ho-Oh, or they'll make the Pokemon super effective against each other, like Zekrom and Reshiram. But very rarely does Game Freak make legendaries that feel unbalanced. Now, that's not to say they won't make the same mistake again in the future, but Generation 3 was definitely the first time I felt it. I've always been a Kyogre kid. Fun fact, Kyogre was actually the first Pokemon that I trained to level 100 by myself. I was like 8 at the time, and then before then, my Nana would always help me either beat battles that were too hard or, you know, get my Pokemon high enough level. But without the personal history involved, just look at these Pokemon's typings and move pulls. Kyogre has the clear advantage over Groudon, and Groudon doesn't really have anything super effective to hit Kyogre back with, aside from save Solar Beam. And this point comes across visually when you take a second to look at these Pokemon fighting in-game. Like, look at Groudon. What's the little guy doing? He's surrounded. For a Pokemon known as the Continent Pokemon, you'd think he'd have raised some more land for him to walk on, but maybe Groudon is just that confident and I'm unaware of his game. Either way, seeing this has always made me laugh and always felt like Kyogre was more dominant in this moment. But then, Oras came out and the entire dynamic was flipped on its head. See, in the beginning when I thought up this video, this was the moment where I realized why Kyogre and Groudon are the best. Just like many other Pokemon during this time period, Groudon and Kyogre were actually given Mega Evolutions, and while other legendaries have gotten some other forms to make them more exciting, these changes actually flipped the dynamic of these two Pokemon in general. See, when Groudon was given its Mega Evolution, it was also given an additional Fire type, which makes sense as the Pokemon is also very volcanic in nature and personality. However, you'll probably notice that Fire is also weak to water, so that doesn't really look too good for our big Titanic lad. But what's this? A new ability called Desolate Land that sets up the sun to boost your fire moves and completely negates all water? Nice. When Game Freak introduced Desolate Land into the game, everything changed. Now, Groudon could not only fight back and disregard water moves altogether, but it could easily fire off those one-turn solar beams without any worry. Now, that being said, the way the weather mechanic works makes it to where the Pokemon that's slowest activates his ability, and therefore supersedes the other. So if we were to send out Kyogre vs Groudon and both Mega Evolve, if your Groudon is faster than my Kyogre, then my Rain will activate and no fire moves are allowed. Doing this allows the Pokemons to still stay somewhat balanced while giving the other one the edge it is needed for quite some time. Again, I love this franchise dearly, and many of these box arts hold a special place in my heart. However, when it comes to pedigree, timelessness, utility, and most of all design, these two Pokemon really stand out amongst the crowd for me. They're not even my absolute favorite, but if you asked me who the most iconic legendary duo was, I'd be hard pressed not to say these two. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button down below for me. Like I said, I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the year, so make sure you are subscribed, that way you know when each and every single one of my videos comes out. If you have an idea for a video, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below, and I will see you all next time.